Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, how's it going? So it's been a while since I did a prediction video, and I figured since I'm kind of bored this afternoon, and I'm not really doing anything, why not talk about this upcoming fight that's taking place in Japan between Kenshiro Taraji and Heki Budler from South Africa. The fight's going to be taking place next Monday, I believe. And yeah, it's not uncommon for fights that take place in Japan to take place during the week. And they usually happen around about late morning to uh, early afternoon so with it taking place during the day I'm probably not going to be able to watch it live because I'll probably be working so yeah chances are I'll probably just watch it on YouTube or something afterwards. So yeah let's talk about this fight. So this fight was brought to my attention by some subscribers on one of my recent live streams and it's one of them fights that kind of went over my head uh, with me not really paying that much attention to boxing lately. It wouldn't surprise anybody that I haven't paid a lot of attention to the lower weight divisions and particularly the light flyweight division is just one of them divisions that I barely have any recollection of ever watching any fights in. So yeah, chances are I, I've never seen either one of these guys fight before doing the research I needed to do for this prediction. So the more I looked into it and the more I watched of Taraji and Budler, the more I got the feeling that this fight, although I have a pretty clear idea of who's going to win and how it's going to go, the more I got the feeling that it could turn out to be a barn burner. I really do think, stylistically, this is one of them fights that really will gel. And I think it might even be a fight of the year candidate. Like I said, I think I know who's going to win and I think it will be relatively conclusive. But just the styles of the two guys intrigues me. So... For those of you who aren't aware of uh, Kenshiro Taraji, he's a unified light flyweight champion. The, f the fight's going to be taking place for his titles. And uh, yeah, he's had those titles for a while now. Interestingly, he actually lost his title where he got knocked out. However, he won the title back in a rematch by knockout. So yeah, he came back and um, basically outdid his opponent, took him out quicker. And since then, he's had a couple of really impressive highlight reel knockouts. And he's beaten some undefeated contenders as well. And uh, in that light flyweight division, he's definitely the man to beat in that division. You know, he's a unified champion. He's an up-and-comer. He's 31 years old, so he's not exactly young. But he looks to me like a relatively young 31. And just looking at the guy and just examining his style... He reminds me very, very much of Naioa Inoue, just in terms of his overall approach to the sport. And that's that he's a guy who's in there, who's not messing about at all. You know, he's one of these guys who is very, very gun-ho. Uh, you know, he's very, very heavy-handed. He's basically a two-handed puncher. You know, he's a guy who's in there to take your head off. Very, very hyper-aggressive. Will take punches to land punches. Um, got very, very fast twitch muscles. And he's about five foot five, so he's a very small and stocky guy, but he's extremely strong and, and extremely powerful. And to me, he just looks like a very, very dangerous puncher. And he's one of these guys who has shown his vulnerabilities. Like I said, he's been knocked out before, and fairly recently too. That fight was only in 2021, so it was only a couple of years ago now. But like I said, he's one of these guys who it's all or nothing. You know, he's very gun-ho. He's a guy who's in there to knock you out and break you down. And he's not in there to go to a decision. He's not in there to outbox you. He's a knockout artist. That's kind of the kind of the vibe I get looking at Ken Shiro. And, you know, he's at that stage of his career where, you know, he seems to be coming into his prime now. And Heki Budler, to me, he seems to be at the opposite end of his career. He's 35 years old, which, again, there's not that much of a difference in age. But he's been a professional for a long, long time. He turned pro, I believe, in 2007, and he's a former minimum weight champion. He held the minimum weight title for several years before he ended up losing it and moving up in weight. And he's he's a guy who's been around a long time. You know, he's a, a veteran at this point. He's a guy who's lingered around world level at the light flyweight division, but has never really been able to reach the highest level. Uh, he was actually stopped by a guy who, in turn, was also stopped by... Um, Taraji, so there's a, a little little bit of a, a triangle theory for him right there. But yeah, from what I see from Heki Budler, and I've watched some of his fights now, he's a guy who's fundamentally sound. 
he's a guy who appears to have a great chin. You know, he's very, very durable, very, very tough, very, very stocky. And he's a guy who's a a bit workmanlike, but in a good way, if you know what I mean. Like He's a guy who will tough it out with you, he'll outwork you, he'll outland you. And he basically, he has the durability and the toughness and the guard and just the, the boxing know-how to overcome other disadvantages that he has like he's not a puncher the guy only has 11 knockouts and even when he's fighting journeyman they usually go the distance with him and uh, he in recent years he's gone you know he's gone life and death against guys who i wouldn't really favor to give taraji much trouble like for example i watched his fight against a guy called elwin soto and uh, that fight was incredibly close incredibly competitive and he barely escaped with the victory and um, he's had several fights like that in his career. You know, he's, he's had several fights where he's he's basically won on toughness and durability against guys who you would imagine have the physical ability to beat him. And I think he's done that mostly based on just being battle-hardened and experienced. But from what I can see from his recent fights, Hecky Budler, despite being tough and despite being fundamentally sound, what I notice about him is he's a little bit one-paced compared to what he used to be. And what I mean by that is he's just kind of going through the motions in the ring, whereas Taraji, to me, appears to be a guy who, you know, he's in there to, to, to really bring the pain. You know, he's in there to really take you out. And um, he'll do what he needs to do to get you out of there. You know, Hecky Budler, to me, just looks like he's not really as interested. You know, he's a little bit lethargic now. And again, it's it's one of them fights where I think Budler's general toughness and durability, his lack of punching power, but his experience is going to make for a long and grueling fight for both men. But I think what's going to happen in the end is I think the younger man, the stronger man, the bigger puncher, who is obviously Taraji, I think that's going to see him through to a, a late stoppage victory. But I think it's going to be a situation where... He's maybe going to get chin-checked here and there during the fight to Raji because, again, Hecky Budler's got a good guard. He seems to have a good jab from what I've seen. He, he, he tends to win a lot of his fights primarily on the jab. And like I said, he's got a pretty good chin. He's only been stopped once in his career. You know, he's also one of these guys who travel quite well. You know, he's fought on the road several times in his career. He seems to be quite a proficient body puncher. And even though he's not a big puncher, he can be quite attritional. You know, he is one of these guys who, in the later rounds, does have a pretty good work rate and does really put it on you as the fight goes on. So, obviously, with him being a little bit past his prime, that might not be the case now. But it has been the case in some of his other recent fights. You know, the guy's gone 12 rounds many times in his career. So, obviously, he has that mental advantage going into the fight. That look, He knows he's fought big punchers before. He's been able to last the distance. He's fought on the road before. This is really nothing new for him. But you have to imagine that there comes a time eventually in boxing when, you know, age and wear and tear catches up with you. And Hecky Budler, to me, at 35 years old, he just kind of has that look about him. So I think this is going to be an interesting fight. I think Hecky Budler's going to go in there. You know, he's going to try and box. He's going to try and make it a technical fight. But I think Kenshiro Taraji is going to go in there. He's going to be moving his head. He's going to be dipping and diving and slipping and sliding. He's going to be trying to create openings. You know, he's going to try and trap Budler on the ropes. He's going to try and work him to the body. He seems to be very, very good from mid-range, Taraji. That's one thing I've noticed. He seems to be very good at slipping those uppercuts through the middle of a guard and then working the body. And if you look at his last fight, he actually sort of systematically destroyed the opponent and knocked him through the ropes and it was quite impressive and I, I could just see in this fight I think Budler wants to make it a slow fight and you know he wants to kind of use his experience and um, kind of kid around an old man his way through the early rounds and try and take it to the later rounds then if he's able to survive the early rounds and maybe survive a scare and survive an early onslaught I could see him really trying to put it on Kenshiro Taraji in the later rounds but personally I don't think he's going to be able to do that because I think that Taraji at this stage of his career you know he's going to make enough of an impact in the early rounds 
to where Butler's not really going to have the energy or really the motivation in the later rounds to do what he needs to do to win. And I already mentioned earlier, you know, Butler's not a puncher. Um, he hasn't been able to stop guys who are leagues below Kenshiro Taraji. So I, I think that Kenshiro Taraji is going to win the fight, and I do think he's going to do it by stoppage. You know, Taraji doesn't strike me as the kind of fighter who's even interested in going the distance in fights. He he seems to me, like I said, he's similar to Naioa in a way, in the sense that he's a two-handed puncher. And he's a guy who seems very, very gun-ho and very, very determined to get the stoppage in fights. So, yeah, I think that Taraji is going to... It's just going to be too young, too fresh, too fit, too strong, too determined. And he's going to be fighting at home as well. He's going to be fired up for this one. Um, J Japanese boxing is doing really well right now. They've gained a lot of momentum. And I think he's going to want to continue that. And I think he's going to want to make a statement. And I think the fight's going to be a bomb burner. I think that Budler will really force a performance out of Taraji. Because like I said, Budler's a very tough man. You know, he's a guy who doesn't often get stopped. And he's a guy who's been in 12-round wars that have been very close and back and forth. And he's shown a tremendous amount of heart. And he's been around a very long time. And this is probably the last chance for him to become a champion again. So I think he's going to go out on his shield. But I think it's going to be um, a one-sided beating. Uh, but an entertaining one. And, and I think Taraji is probably going to perform his best performance yet so yeah I'm really looking forward to this fight it's one of them fights that I don't really have a dog in the race but I just kind of see it as one that I can't see not being entertaining if you know what I mean so yeah that's how I see this fight pretty standard prediction I think it's pr I'm, I'm pretty confident in the result I think Taraji's going to stop Butler and I think he's going to do it probably from round 8 to round 12 somewhere in the later rounds and he may be will have to work overtime to do it, if you know what I mean. I think he's going to have to avoid that jab early on, because Butler seems to have a very good jab, as I said earlier. And I think he's going to have to be a little bit more creative in this fight, in terms of creating openings, compared to his previous fight. So yeah, that's how I see this fight. I'm going with Kenshiro Taraji by late stoppage, and uh, Heki Butler, I think, goes out on his shield in the later rounds. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and God bless.